Hello and welcome to this video and on this video I want to look at different approaches to doing and listening to drum solos. So these videos I'm doing on the drum kit are designed for drummers and non-drummers alike. I'm not going to try and get too technical but I do want to go through a number of approaches that I use for doing drum solos and these are obviously influenced by other drummers that I've seen doing it and I find this a very useful thing to have a sort of um, have a sort of structure in my mind of what I'm doing when I'm soloing. And I sort of want to sort of cover those as much as I can in this video. Okay, so when I sit down and play the drums, I've got to decide whether I'm practicing or I'm playing. They're two completely different things. When I'm practicing, I'm trying to um, keep up the stuff I can do and make sure that's all well oiled and hopefully work on stuff that I can't do so that I'm moving forward. Often when I practice, I'll practice using drum solos. Sometimes these are practice solos, sometimes they're playing solos, because playing is a completely different thing. When you're playing, you're thinking about what it musically sounds like. You're imagining a listener, right? You're imagining someone out there and how they're going to perceive it, okay? So often with drum solos, the problem is the drummers will, be, will fall into what I call practice drum solo. So often when I sit down on the kit, I'll just have a blaze. And I'm going to do that now. And it's quite fun, but I'm going to do it for quite a long time. Let's see how long it takes before it gets boring. So I'm going to have just a bit of a blaze around the kit. Right, so it's actually can be impressive to play like that, right? But oh, it's fast and it's loud and there's a lot going on. But really, um, how musical is it? So I will often practice like that. I've uh, just sat down. That's the first thing I've played today, so I'm not warmed up. Um, and it's a good way of warming up. Um, often I won't do it that extreme, but even this type of thing. Even that, that's, that's often how I'll start playing and I can feel the weaknesses and it starts to uh, give me an idea of what I can and cannot do, right? Um, but that for me, in fact I think I'll just knock this cymbal slightly off, that for me is not what a solo is about, right? So now I'm going to play in a much more melodic way, in a much more phrased way, okay? I'm still not going to worry too much about time or form or structure. Let's get into that in a minute. But I'm just going to play in a much more melodic, listener-focused way. I'm still soloing, but it's a different type of soloing. What I'm thinking about is the rhythmical phrasing and the melodic structure. We'll get into that in a minute. But I think that way of playing in a more melodic and phrasing way is something that I often find drummers can't do at all. And the reason they can't do it is because in their practice, they haven't worked on their rhythmic vocabulary. Okay? Um, and so they, they, they've got all the chops and the techniques but what they haven't got is a vocabulary. So we can see techniques as, as words, that these words have meanings, and we know what those meanings are. But how do we string them together into a coherent sentence? Well, maybe you need some sort of story. Now, when you do a drum solo, there's a number of ways of creating a story. Now, one of the things you could do 
is by contrasting one way of playing against the other. And this is a technique I use a lot when I'm creating solos. So what I would do is whatever I just did, I would do the opposite. So say I start the solo like this. There we go. Now there, I've confined down what I've done. I've constricted it down. When you do solos, you, have, you can't do everything. So you've got to decide to do something. So I did the most obvious thing, and that was to play the drum in front of me, the snare drum. There's a little bit of bass drum there. But after I've done that, I could say to myself, what did I just do? I just did everything on the snare drum. So what's the opposite of that? Maybe it's playing around the toms, or maybe it's the cymbals. So you contrast. So. I'm there contrasting the sound, okay? Or say I'd sat down and I started to blaze, it's very easy to do. So now I'm contrasting playing really burning blazing stuff with hardly any space and just creating more space. I probably wasn't doing enough space. Let's really get some space into this, you know. Let's really contrast. Okay, suddenly it becomes more interesting. Fast and slow, loud and quiet. So this is something I do when I'm thinking in my solo. So, so they don't get boring, I think. What did I just do and how can I contrast it? Now we can get into the structure of the solos. Because one of the contrasts that's there for me is being in time or out of time. We, when I say about playing melodically, melodically is the pitch, it's the tune. The timing is the phrasing. On the drums, our biggest uh, thing we've got is time. So time's very important. And to have good time, you have to work on your rhythmic vocabulary. That's another lesson. But you need to develop a good rhythmical vocabulary. That means that you can play interesting rhythms. Now, to develop that's another thing. It's really looking at the 16th note series, being familiar with that, the triplet series, being familiar with that, being able to play over the bar line and studying all that rhythmical stuff. But if you've got that down, I suggest what you do is just play with one hand. Now, Rick Beato has just done an interview with John Schofield and they asked him about improvisation. He did a one-fingered guitar solo and I thought, He's doing that because he's trying to take the technique out of it so he can hear the tunes he's got in his head. So how much have you got you to say rhythmically? I'm going to play a one-handed drum solo now, right? Right, so how much vocabulary have you got when you strip all the technique away, right? When I started to play that, I was really focused on the, uh, the timing and trying to create rhythmical phrases. And I suddenly became, using the thing I mentioned before, I suddenly became aware that um, I wasn't using any dynamics. And so halfway through that, you start to see me bring dynamics in. That's this contrasting thing. So one of the things that I find really interesting is one-handed drum solos. Now, if you're playing a one-handed drum solo, that frees your hand 
up to do something else. The other hand can do something else. And that's, this starts to create rhythmical difficulties and coordination difficulties. So let's take something quite simple that I could be doing with my right hand. So I'm going to go. Right. This becomes an ostinato, which is like a riff. I can now play against that. And because I've got something locking the time, it allows me to push the rhythms further out. This is something that I have used a lot on drum solos. Right, melodic playing. Melodic playing is the pitch, right? You could play high and low. You could play um, cymbals and drums. This creates a melody. So if you go... To the audience, that might be the same rhythm, but it sounds like a different thing. So think of those two parameters, mel melody, which on the drums is pitch, and rhythm. And play one-handed solos. And as a practice routine, get the other limb to hold something down and play it. So I'm going to take this pattern. To accentuate the melody, I'm taking the snares off, something I got from Terry Bozo. So I'm taking the snares off. I've got, I've got two more similar sounds in terms of pitches. I've got two pitches. So. That suddenly becomes easy for me to play now because I've got something to play against, timing-wise. This is a device that's been really useful for me, right? The other thing I'm now doing is I'm repeating phrases. This is a big mistake people do make when they do solos. This part of the problem with the stuff I was playing at the start when I was blazing is that the audience has got nothing to latch onto, right? Think about song forms, A-A-B-A. -A -A. So A-A-B-A -A -A could be... So I played a phrase, I played a phrase again, I played a counter phrase, and then I played the first phrase again. And you could use that in any way you want. So repetition is very, very important. Um, so now let's get into the ways of creating structure within the solos. So one thing I like to do, and so I practice this, is to uh, pick up a phrase, usually every bar or every two bars, or maybe every four bars. So I'm going to pick a phrase up here and it's going to go like this You can see, I did one of those big, fast, stupid licks right in the middle of there. 
but I used it musically. And then once I did it, I contrasted it and it made it more simple, more, more effective. So creating something in your solo to play against is really important. So one of the things I became very interested in with soloing is the use of ostinato patterns. I did it a little bit earlier. I'm now going to do it now to a much greater extent. I'm going to play a foot ostinato and it's going to be in 12. And it's going to be made up like this. It's going to go left, right, right with the foot, feet, bass drum, then left, right, right on my hi-hat and bass drum. Then I'm going to flange the hi-hat and I'm going to shut the hi-hat. So this is in effect left, right, right on the feet, but voiced across the pedals. That creates an ostinato pattern, but now I've got both hands free, okay? Um, but I'm going to do the same restriction again. So with the right hand, I'm going to put this across the top of it. And I think this is in a different timing altogether. Let's just see. It's in 12 broken up compound time in three, and that's in 12 broken up um, into three, four. And I'm going to now play against that with my left hand. So now I've got this quite complex thing to play against. Right, so there I was able to mess around with the time and I actually did the same contrasty thing. When I started playing, I actually took the right hand rhythm, it's a bit polyrhythmical, and I started to play 4-4. Four, four. And then when I then took that out and started to play around the kit, I played within the 12 framework of the foot pattern, right? Then I started to take it out. And at some points I played polyrhythmically, so that's what, within that 12, I might have been playing a 5 over that 12 or 7. And at some points just took the time away completely, right? And another po point, I played cross rhythms, which means I was playing multiples of different timings against that. So there's a vocabulary here. The whole thing about drum solos, it's about a vocabulary. It's about developing a vocabulary. So if any of you are watching this, you are drummers or musicians, because it applies to musicians as well, in terms of guitar solos, saxophone solos, it, you really must understand that 80% of what you're doing is rhythm. It's only 20% notes, there's only 12 notes, but what makes the music happen is rhythm. So if any of you out there are interested in taking online lessons, this is what I'm doing at the moment, you know, I wanna really get into teaching some people this stuff that I've learned over the last 40 years. So if you're interested, drop me a, a message, my email will be below. And um, if any non-drummers are finding this interesting, you know, please let me know. I don't want to clog up my channel uh, with uh, lots of stuff if it's not interesting for people. I can go back to ranking videos anytime. Um, one more thing, just got to mention my sponsors. I'm playing British Drum Company Drums, the Rolls Royce of drums. They are the best in the world. They sound absolutely incredible. And, and I've just moved in to uh, Dream Symbols, I'm playing Dark Matter, Bliss, which is the sound I've been looking for for so long. You know, that sort of dark, trashy jazz sound, but without any of the nastiness that you associate with trashiness. And a, and a symbol that I can pull many sounds out of. And I'm really pleased to be working with, with Dream Symbols now, actually incredible symbols. 
Um, so if you like, then like and subscribe, you know, please, if you want to know more of this, and I, I would love to be doing more of this on my Patreon, if that's possible. So if we get more drummers in, I can start doing a lot more drum content. And um, if you've got any questions, put them in the thing below. If you want me to talk about anything else, I will. And I'm going to go now. I'm done. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.